Welcome to our reception for the Calix Schenecker Art Infinitum 20th Annual Hillsborough County High School Fine Arts Competition. My name is Amanda Poss and I am the Gallery Director for Hillsborough Community College. All 120 artworks are available for you to see it either online, if you go to our website, we have them all in an album, or this year you can actually see the show in person by simply booking an appointment to see the show hccfl.edu slash gallery 221. Now let me tell you a little bit more about our speakers. Uh, after you hear some more from me regarding the show, our program will continue with Dean Dustin Lemke, who will have a few words of welcome on behalf of the college. And after Dean Lemke's welcome, we'll share with you all the artworks that were submitted for the show and those installation views. Then we'll hear from none other than Parker Shaniker, who will speak on behalf of the Calix and Bow Memorial Fund. Next, our awards presentations will be announced by myself and Dean Amy Bousquet, and we will conclude with closing remarks from Lee Lowry. Now, this show holds a really special place in our hearts at HCC, and we're especially excited that we were able to continue to host this exhibition with both in-person and online viewing options as we celebrate 21 years of championing student artists. And I would be remiss if I didn't tell a little bit about the namesake for our show. Um, one of the features every year since receiving the scholarship of the Calix Embo Memorial Fund is the tribute area that we include in the exhibition honoring the memory of Calix Schenecker, whose name is, as I mentioned, in the title of our show. So we wanted to begin this presentation with a moment to remember Calix, whose legacy reminds us about art's power to inspire hope and change and how important it is to support the creative endeavors of our youth. Now, uh, I wanna say a few quick words of thanks and send my appreciation to the organizations who support makes this exhibition possible. So first, the Calix Imbo Memorial Fund, then the HCC Student Activities and Student Government Association, the HCC Foundation, the Tampa Museum of Art, Tempest Projects, Battle Studios, and Hooked on a Cure Tampa Bay. Thank you so much for making the special exhibition, scholarships, gifts, and programming possible. I just have a couple more words of thanks. These big shows, they take a lot of hands to make a reality. So I want to express my sincere gratitude to our college administration, Dr. Alan Witt, who's our HCC Dale Mabry campus president, as well as Deans Lemke and Bousquet, who are both with us tonight for their support of the gallery and the arts at HCC. I always hold a special thanks for my gallery team who worked tirelessly to put this exhibition and event together, as I mentioned, 120 wonderful artworks. So thank you, Emiliano Setacasi, Michael Murphy, and our student worker, Davion Given. And now, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce to you all Dustin Lemke, Dean of Associates in Math and Sciences for a few words of welcome. Dustin, whenever you're ready, go ahead. I noticed she said a few words of welcome. She knows that <laughs> I go on and on. And, and I have to just a little bit for this. Um, every year as we prepare um, for this, I always try and think of kind of inspirational things to say about it. Um, it's so moving uh, from who it's named after to the students that, that submit artwork. It's, it's really great. But today, my thoughts were all kind of thrown out the window as I visited the artwork um, in the gallery and looked at it. And it was a reminder that as much as on these events, we try and all put on smiles and look our best on Zoom and everything, <clears throat> that it's not been an easy year. And there were several themes that I saw as I went through the artwork that just really jumped out at me. So I wanna mention a few of those. One was I just thought there was an overall theme of being trapped at times. There were lots of different um, pieces that did that. Particularly, I thought Catherine Cracks blindly submerged with people stuck in water. Uh, whether that, I don't know if it's a political statement or if it was a statement on this last year of how, but I know I felt stuck at times um, for that. There was a giant theme of death in this. I, I'm, I'm worried about y'all. You're, you know, you're young, and I hope that you're getting all the support and the help that you need. But I, I often think of doing. I think of death um, 
you can't quite see it in my office, but I have some skulls and things in some of my artwork here too. I think it's been around us. It's been in the news. We can't escape it this year. And of course, at the same time that I think about death, it makes me think, you know what? My job isn't as important as I think. Like I, th I had three or four things I didn't get done today and it's okay if I don't get them done because one day I'll be dead and nobody will care if I got my to-do list done on April the 8th, 2021. So I enjoy those, particularly Kiera Vasquez Valentin's death tarot card. I thought that was so beautiful and so well done for that. I also appreciated the new quirky worlds that you guys are imagining because sometimes this last year I haven't wanted to live in this world. So I really appreciated all these new and imaginative things that you had, especially that willow tree that Ava Davis did, the watching willow. I just could imagine living in a world with trees that look like that. It was lovely. Um, I also, what I love about you all is your activism. In piece after piece after piece, there was some component of activism that if we are gonna live in this world, I'm thankful that you guys are working to make it a better world and to change things and do things. In particular, Isabel Bandrit's piece, which is called Reflections of Me, there was one tiny little button on the wall, Isabel, that said, be an active bystander. And so I'm, I'm just appreciative that you guys are not just standing by and letting the world go by, but you want to be active in um, confronting violence, confronting wrongs, and trying to fix those. This one, really, I love it. I don't know why there were so many. Why are there so many art pieces with eyeballs where the eyeballs just stood out so much in this? Uh, Michaela Garcia, your simper thigh, great pun and great artwork. I loved it. It was so good. And I wonder if it's because we've been on Zoom this year and all we see are everybody's eyes. You know what I mean? Like Lee Lowry, her glasses are jumping out at me. And Lenny, I don't know who you are, but there's your glasses and your eyes jumping out at me. So I don't know if it's that or if we're looking forward to a new world or something. Now I can't, I keep looking at my eyes now. But it was, there were so many pieces with eyes. And um, finally, I'm just very appreciative of really there's, as in any art show, there's a theme of beauty, uh, kind of everyday beauty that we look around us and we see what's really around us. So Maya Watson, I, I just loved your raw and refined, the ceramics pieces. I just, I kept going back to those. I was drawn to them. If somebody had told me they were from, I don't know, sixth century China, I would have believed them. It's just so, they're so stunning. They're so, so pretty. Um, and they were very mesmerizing to me. So once again, as always, um, in our world, when we get upset, we turn to music, we turn to theater, we turn to visual arts. And so I appreciate you guys uh, being um, confronting the serious issues of the day, but also, you know, being the balm for our souls and helping us a little bit. Uh, I do have a few thank yous for our judges. And by the way, stunning list of judges um, from the Tampa Bay area, uh, just really amazing that these folks took the time to um, critique and judge um, your artwork. And I feel if you win an award tonight, this has to go in your resumes uh, because this is uh, some, some serious stuff going on here. So we appreciate Tracy Medulla, who's an art professor here at HCC, also a founder and director of the Tempest Projects in Tampa. Uh, Anthony Record, who's an artist and the studio programs coordinator at the Tampa Museum of Art. Uh, then Jocelyn Bogenson, who's the director of the Scarphone Hartley Gallery over at the University of Tampa. Uh, Sumitu, Sumitra Chandra Treya, who's a fiber and installation artist who has also um, exhibited at the HCC um, Gallery. So we appreciate his support for this. Um, and then Caitlin Montagna, an artist and professional photographer. And then Dr. Allison Moore, a curator of photography at the Museum of Fine Arts, St. Petersburg. Um, wonderful, excellent lineup of judges. We appreciate their time and effort. And I just think this is it says something um, for those of you um, who are recognized tonight that um, this wasn't some, this wasn't easy. <laughs> some people with um, uh, true um, skills and passion for art have looked at this and, and awarded this. So uh, thank you all. Good to be here. Uh, very excited to see some of the artwork that we're going to get to look at here in a moment.
Thank you, Dustin. Um, as always, for your, your careful consideration of our shows, I love that you gave quite a few students a shout out and recognize them um, for their innovation. I got to say, this is a show, hands down, our, our faculty and staff look forward to every year. So I want to echo Dustin's enthusiasm and say how special this is for us at HCC. Um, so speaking of, at this time, we would like to share with you a presentation of all of the included artworks for the show, along with some of the installation images, um, to celebrate all of our artists tonight.
So really lovely seeing all the artwork there. Congratulations to everyone whose work is included in the show. And, and I just want to take a, another brief moment before I introduce our next speaker and say, if you noticed, we included the teachers' names and all of the labels. We do this every year. It's worth mentioning a special shout out to all of your fabulous, tireless, phenomenal art teachers for supporting you along the way. And all those people who aren't named, all of the families, the parents, the siblings, everyone who's supporting these artists to make their work. So congratulations to, to the artists and thank you to the teachers and their families. And now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce one of the, the best human beings that I know. Um, Parker Scheneker, who's speaking on behalf of the Calyx and Bow Memorial Fund, who's a longtime partner of HCC and the gallery. So Parker, whenever you're ready, go ahead and unmute. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, welcome uh, or greetings from, uh, from Central Texas, from my wife, Kelly, and me. We just, uh, just kind of slid in from being on the road all day. Uh, and, uh, and sorry, we joined a little bit late. Um, Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Amanda. I, I feel the same way about you. This, uh, this partnership is uh, so strong and, uh, and so positive uh, that uh, we couldn't go wrong if we wanted to. One of the things that struck me this year about the, about the show and, and seeing that the photos is just kind of the, the stark reality of beautiful works, uh, so beautifully curated in Gallery 221. Loved it. Clean and simple, but powerful. But I certainly would love to have the gallery filled with all of our people. Um, and that would really, really make me make me happy. Um, but that that that's not going to happen this year. We'll get it done next year. So sitting next to my gator in front of our 10 and a half foot gator on the wall, uh, we kind of like art ourselves. Um, Thank you all for joining us uh, this evening for this wonderful event. Uh, really my favorite, our favorite event of the year. Um, give you a little background on this. So uh, 2011 or so, um, I had been asked by some friends to go see their son's work that was, that was in a gallery at HCC. Uh, it was competing for some, some accolades. And uh, so I jumped in with them and, and saw the works and walked in and saw Gallery 221 and knew at that exact second that, that, that uh, it was something that we needed to sponsor and we needed to be a part of uh, on a permanent basis. Um, for those of you who didn't get a chance to know Calix and Bo, my children, um, Calix was 16 and Bo 13 in 2011 uh, when on a deployment, while I was on a deployment from Afghanistan, uh, they both, they both uh, tragically passed away uh, while I was gone. And so uh, we've spent every waking moment since the 27th of January, 2011, honoring and loving our children. Um, and so you get to do that as well. And you honor us uh, by your presence and by your participation. Uh, thank you to all of our partners. Uh, but you know, Amanda, I, I love it. You keep, you keep rolling me in after Dustin. And sometimes it's the easiest thing because he just tees everything up and says everything that needs to be said. Um, sometimes it's really, really hard. And uh, you know, it's been, it has been a hard year on all of us, um, but we are leaning forward. We're all gonna come out of this uh, in a much uh, more knowledgeable place. And hopefully the, the friends and family ties have strengthened during our, during our, our crisis and our, our COVID issues. I just wanna thank all of the artists for participating and giving the, the love out of your hearts and your energies. Um, I remember so many times walking into Calix's room and seeing a trash can full of wadded up pieces of paper that were pieces that she had started and she was not happy with. Yes, yeah, she was a perfectionist. Um, but I just, I, I challenge you all, I applaud you all and just so happy that we can be part of this uh, together. Uh, we look forward to, uh, to joining or to, to gathering a few new family members this year as our, uh, as our winners will, will join the Schenker Ohana. Uh, that's exciting for us. On behalf of Kelly, my mom, Nancy, who's in San Antonio, my brother, Edmund, thank you all very much for your love, your, uh, your consideration, your memory of our children, and uh, congratulations 
on uh, on everything you've done. Parents, guardians, teachers, it takes a village. I know it, right? So keep pulling on that oar together. Love our kids, love our artists. And Amanda, I'm not sure if I'm turning it back over to you or if I'm turning it over to Amy. So thank you all very much. We love you very much. That's back to me. Thank you so much, Parker. It's so good to have you both. I'm glad you made it safe and sound. I mean, that's dedication from the road right to the home to the Zoom meeting. Um, and, you know, we are also really looking forward to having everybody back, hopefully next year in this space. You know, we usually have like 300 of you all in our third floor gathered in celebration. Um, but for now, here we are on Zoom and, and you can come in, in small groups <laughs> in person to see the show in person. It really is quite spectacular. Um, at this point now, I would like to introduce Amy Bousquet, Dean of Associate in Arts, who's going to say a few words and then kick off our awards announcements. So Amy, whenever you're ready, go ahead and unmute. All right. Well, first of all, um, before I get into the things I have to read, and I just would like to take a moment to say that of all the events that we do, this is absolutely my favorite for all the reasons I've said um, before. And it has been a difficult year, um, but the I love the way the artists are able to take those emotions that we've all felt and kind of um, in isolation and um, and social distancing and you know mask wearing and all of this and been able to create with it and, and kind of bring us together. Um, and going through to the gallery and seeing the work was, was incredibly inspiring. So I um, love this event. And when Amanda asked me a couple of weeks ago if I would um, read the winners with her, I absolutely said, yes, of course. Um, this is what I look forward to every year. So thank you for being here. I think this is wonderful. All right, so let's talk a little bit, first of all, about um, the awards. So all award winners tonight will receive a graphite object from Battle Studios purchased with the support uh, of the nonprofit Hooked on a Cure. Honorable mentions in all categories will receive a ticket to the Tampa Museum of Art and a small sketchbook. First, second, and third place winners will receive all of the items above, as well as a generous scholarships to attend HCC, Third place winners will receive $100. Second place winners will receive $300. And first place winners will receive $500 in scholarship funds. Thanks again to all of our sponsors for making these gifts and awards possible. All right, are we ready to hear the winners? And here we go. We're going to start with 2D art. In the category of 2D art, our three honorable mentions go to Kayla Adir, Layla, excuse me, Layla Adir from Alonzo High School for Choleric Canine. Kara Vasquez Van Valentin from Howard Lake High School for Death Tarot Card. And Sophie Rice from Newsom High School for Reseda Green. Our third place award goes to Michaela Garcia from Sickles High School for Semper Fi. Our second place award goes to Kayla Eggman from Steinbrenner High School for Brown Eyed Girl. And finally, our first place award goes to Joanna Kuntz from Tampa Preparatory School for Lady and Yellow. Congratulations to all our winners. And now Amanda will read the ones for the awards in 3D art. Thank you so much, Amy. So in the category of 3D art, our three honorable mentions go to Jolena Jasperson from Howard W. Blake High School for Break Free. 
Our next honorable mention goes to Reese Miller from Howard W. Blake High School for her artwork dinner time. And our final honorable mention goes to Jordan Palaubet from Tampa Preparatory School for Tanzanian Bird. And now our third place award goes to Ethan Stefanis from Howard W. Blake High School for the artwork Drowning Bear. Our second place award goes to Natalie Stasikevich from Newsom High School for Tori Kagomatsuri, Festive Birdcage. And finally, our first place award goes to Jorge Rodriguez from Tampa Preparatory School for My COVID Friends. <laughs> Congratulations to all our award winners in the category of 3D art. Now, Amy will read our photography winners. Okay, so in the category of, of photography, our three honorable mentions go to Olivia Mel, uh, Milburn from Howard W. Blake High School for Urban Jungle. Next, Nayara Garcia from Howard W. Blake High School for Lovely Walk. And our third, uh, third our, our third honorable mention, Venicia Lee from Howard W. Blake High School for Famous Pot Cleaner. The third place award goes to Katie Fisher from Plant High School for Pop. Our second place award goes to Ian Ambercrombie from Tampa Prep for Sarasota Summer. And finally, our first place award winner in photography goes to Laura Lopez from Howard W. Blake High School for Smokehouse. Congratulations to all our award winners. All right, Amanda, back to you. Okay, next we have the winner of the People's Choice Award, who will receive a household membership to the Tampa Museum of Art. This is always a really exciting award for us, and this year, as in last year, it was decided through an online poll on the gallery's social media. Participants simply liked their favorite to cast a vote. Um, ever since we made this available online, I can tell you guys, there was an immediate outpouring of enthusiasm and support for our exhibiting student artists. Um, for the albums and photos, we received over 1,600 votes, almost 80 comments, and over 70 shares. It's a lot of enthusiasm. The overall reach of our album was over 5,000. So this made its way around everybody really joining in enthusiasm and, and liking your artworks. So thank you for those of you who shared and liked and commented your support. So now it's my pleasure to share with you the winner of the People's Choice Award with over 200 of those votes. The winner goes to Laura Lopez from Howard W. Blake High School for Smokehouse once again. Congratulations, Laura. Continuing from last year, we also have a Gallery's Choice winner. This winner will receive two tickets to the TMA and a sketchbook. This is meant to extend recognition to a student who was not selected for any other awards and was chosen by the gallery team. And it was hard, let me tell you, <laughs> to get a consensus. Um, the artwork we ultimately selected was Worms Will Be Worms by Jorge Hernandez Pina from Alonso High School. Congratulations. So congratulations to all our winners and all our participating artists. And, and now I want you all to stick around for a few more minutes. We have 
Um, closing remarks from Lee Lowry, Director of Development at the HCC Foundation. So Lee, whenever you're ready, go ahead and unmute. I did it. Um, first, thank you, Amanda. Um, first, a little about our organization. The HCC Foundation solely exists to support students and faculty at HCC. We provide scholarships, program support, faculty grants, and we even start initiatives or help start initiatives like our food pantries and new programs like invasive cardiovascular tech and diesel engine tech. And we help support the wonderful work of Amanda at the galleries, which is why I'm here. And the sun is setting, so I'm really bright. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do not need my ring light right now. Um, but anyway, so as we've said a bunch of times now, last year at this event, we were only a month or two into the pandemic. Um, it was probably the first Zoom that I spoke at and probably the first Zoom that many of us even were at ever. Um, and in my little speech, I talked about hanging in there and how inspiring all the students on the call were and how we just needed to stay hopeful. And that's still true a year later, but who would have thought we'd still be on Zoom a year later? It's been so much longer than we thought and our hope has been tested. And I know that most of us feel very much for you guys as high school students not what you expected. I have one of my own and it's it's not what you expected. Um, but as what Dean Lemke mentioned, one of the biggest things that got us through was the work of artists. From ordinary people singing off their balconies in Italy to famous people doing collaborations, artists help us stay hopeful. And you are all part of that legacy. And hope is exemplified by this show and by Felix's family. Thank you, as always, Parker, for your work for so many years now to keep Kayla's spirit alive and to share it with our entire community. So congratulations to the winners and to all of you for your thoughtful work. It was really spectacular. And thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you so much, Lee. I, lo I love that, that line. You said, artists help us stay hopeful. And that is so absolutely and demonstrably true with the work that we see in this exhibition. Um, so with that, we're, we're very quickly coming to a close. I want to say thank you everyone for tuning in and helping us to celebrate our 21st exhibition for Calix Schenecker Art Infinitum and for supporting the work of these incredibly talented young artists. Um, as a reminder, all the artworks in our show are available as a virtual exhibition on our website and also you can find it in our social media at gallery221hcc. And we hope to see you at another upcoming event. Up next, we have a virtual unveiling for our public art project, Nest, which is set as a YouTube premiere that will go live on April 28th at 4 p.m. Then we have a closing reception for our exhibition Engulfed, which is currently on view in Gallery 221 at HCC, which will be moderated by curator Sarah Howard in conversation with artists Laurencia Strauss and Tori Tep. This program will be held on Zoom, much like we are now, on April 29th at 6 p.m. We'll now conclude by replaying the slideshow, honoring all of our exhibiting artists one last time before we, we draw to a close. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you to all our wonderfully, powerfully motivating speakers. And I wanna say to you all, thank you so much. Stay safe and be well.